Hello everybody. Uh, this particular module, I will try to discuss the solid state deformation process. In the last module we have discussed the bulk deformation process, but in this case uh, solid state deformation, uh, under the solid state deformation we will try to discuss the uh, different solid state joining processes. Apart from this thing we will discuss mechanochemical ball milling operation, friction consolidation and different case studies also. But related to the solid state uh, welding joining process, we will try to discuss the friction welding and ultrasonic welding, diffusion and explosive welding. These are the four basics or most widely used the joining or welding techniques associated with the uh, solid state deformation process. Now we see first in solid state deformation process what are the covalences between the surfaces or between the two fabricated parts usually done uh, with the application of I pressure. So, only pressure or both com both heat and pressure together if we apply it, then it is possible to join uh, two component. But of course, on the application of both heat and pressures, in this case, the heat is not enough uh, to melt the substrate material. That is why solid state deformation process is the or joining usually occurs below the melting point temperature. And of course, like uh, other fusion welding process, we here there is no need to use any kind of the filler material. Uh, for this welding processes. Now why we go for the solid state joining process? Because there are option to join using the fusion welding process or other laser or electron beam welding processes then why you go for the, the solid state welding process, joining processes. One thing is that joining or dissimilar materials is an alloy is basically it is a problematic in fusion welding process because it is readily uh, make the intermetallic compound and that actually makes the well joint brittle in nature. So, to avoid uh, this uh, kind of things difficulties associated with the fusion welding process, we can follow the solid state welding process where we can the intermetallic formation will form, but in this case is not the extent what we can get in case of the fusion welding process. So, that is the one the uh, aspect we consider to choose the dissimilar welding using the solid state joining process. Now, other cases uh, for example, the joining of the uh, difficult to weld material and difficult to weld material in the sense to perform the welding using the fusion uh, welding process. For example, aluminum and particular super alloy because aluminum having high affinity to form the oxides and super alloy is usually as the basic metallurgical aspect you try to always create some kind of the crack formation in the welded component if we perform the fusion welding process. So, if we perform the welding aluminum uh, in solid state welding process then the chances of the formation of the oxides will be reduced considerably. So, that is the point uh, through which we can choose the aluminum and super alloy to join or weld using the solid state deformation process. And apart from this thing, uh, this to develop stronger and intermetallic free oil. So, of course, we cannot completely intermetallic free oils is not possible, but we can promote and certain uh, material we can may not get the intermetallic or certain material we can have less amount of the intermetallic formation which produced using the solid state deformation process. So, these are the main driving forces to look into the uh, welding or uh, using the solid state deformation process. Now, basically four types of the solid state welding techniques will I try to discuss. One is the friction welding, ultrasonic welding, diffusion welding and explosive welding. And mechanism of all this uh, welding process are uh, different and joining coalescence mechanism are completely different uh, among these four uh, different processes. We will try to discuss uh, further on about the these four different types of the welding processes. We start with the uh, this thing bonding mechanism in specific to solid state welding process. We have the so many mechanism we usually observe in the solid state deformation process. So, it is basically bonding in a solid state deformation process. One is the localized melting. So, although we are taking we are telling that uh, this melting melting temperature is uh, below um, the solid state deformation process that it should be below the uh, melting point temperature. But it is a very localized melting happens, but overall bulk there might not be any associated with the bulk melting of the material. So, that is why we are telling that it is a localized melting might happen. Then diffusion to occurs uh, between the uh, two components and if we allow diffusion that bonding may occurs between the, the diffusion of the one elements to another at the interface between the two components. The recrystallization mechanism also happens that it is basically sweeping the grain boundary and then through uh, grain boundary migration the 
this uh, new recrystallized grains easily form and the bonding mechanism is basically we consider as a recrystallization. Addition, so the, um, there is an atomic scale, the addition of the two components might happen and the two components can be joined together, then some kind of the interfacial reaction such that it, it at the interface it follow the certain layer of the that inter, uh, intermetallic compound might happen and that helps to bonding uh, between the two components. And in sudden oiling process, there might be having some interfacial morphology. So, it create very specific morphology and that morphology are basically deformation pattern associated with the oiling process. So, that is a helps to interlocking of the two components which is we consider as a the mechanism of interfacial morphology, but in this case two solid components can be joined in the at the following the solid state deformation process. Now, if we look into the localized melting process, it is a for example, the frictional heating. So, while joining are responsible, very localized melting might happen and of, of course, in the observed melting, the explosive friction and the ultrasonic oiling process, this localized uh, melting usually uh, occurs here. But of course, if we measure the uh, temperature of the bulk material, in that cases, it should be below the melting point temperature. And melting facilitates the formation of the intermetallic compounds, actually that actually lowers the bonding strength. This is the another aspect associated with the, the mechanism for the localized melting when you try to join two components using the under the solid state deformation process. Now, if you look into the diffusion, diffusion is basically thermally activated process. So, pertaining to the material properties and the transient temperature distribution depends on uh, it actually decides the what is the diffusion allow and so this bonding between these two components happen. So, this through diffusion mechanism. So, diffusion is basically it is a time dependent phenomena and we say if we, the diffusion may not happen at the room temperature. So, we need to activate the diffusion to occur. So, we need some amount of the this activation energy and which is usually the thermally activated means by application of the heat and pressure we can it is possible to occur diffusion to occur between these uh, two components. But up to certain depth diffusion depth can be limited and of course, it takes much more time to because diffusion is a very slow process. So, it much takes much more time to join or bond between the two solid uh, components. Similarly, recrystallization uh, mechanism if we consider in this case the grain boundary migration uh, try to develop and just interconnect between the grains and uh, these two components and then that is why it is called the that this uh, new grains forms through recrystallization mechanism by grain, grain boundary migration. Then addition is actually bonding occurs between the two surfaces and that is will develop due to the atomic attraction. So, uh, we have to reach uh, this uh, in that range so that the addition force is maximum because the interatomic distance of almost 10 to the power minus 10 meter. So, in that range the atomic uh, addition force becomes maximum and having inverse relation with the square of the atomic distance. So, therefore, addition to occurs. So, it is a atomic bonding occurs between the two component, but it is play the role when it is the this uh, distance has to be reached at this, uh, this particular level, then addition might happen between these two components. Now, interfacial reaction. So, reaction of oxide films with the oil metal. So, that is the though it creates a very strong oxides layer and of course, solubility of the oxide at the interface is also required to perform the this uh, join or, or the welding following the interfacial reaction. Even reaction between the two oil metals might happen for example, formation of the intermetallic compound. So, <coughs> this between these two at the even for the solid state uh, temperature particular temperature the reaction to form the intermetallic compound and it is able to bond between the two components. So, that is why it is mechanism of that. And apart from this thing, phase transformation also occurs where solidification of the uh, multiple material. So, this is we can consider this as a interfacial reaction of bonding, but of course, this is not our scope. Our scope is basically through uh, this uh, the solid state deformation process. These are the two bonding mechanisms is uh, for joining or welding of the uh, two components. Now, we start with the friction welding. So, we see this is the most widely used that. Uh, uh, welding process, I can say the friction welding. So, friction welding you know that friction welding is basically the frictional heat generation will be there 
and then that frictional heat will try to bond to component but it never reach to the, the as a bulk the melting point temperature. So, uh, the frictional heating is basically limited to below the melting point temperature and this frictional heat is basically the this try to create some kind of the plastic deformation because it is uh, the generated heat reduces the this uh, strength of the material and then plastic deformation occurs and during the plastic deformation bonding of covalences happens at the plastic deformation stage between the two components. Now, if you look into investigate the different types of the friction rolling process, so we say that there are usually five types of the friction rolling process one is the linear, rotary, fixed steer and radial and orbital these are the three, four, five different types of the uh, friction rolling process usually, usually observed. But here what we can generate the frictional heat because some kind of the relative motion between the two components might must be there and the relative motions is responsible for the frictional heat generation at the interface. But of course, in this case the friction welding we, we say it is a solid state welding process and in this case work piece rotates at the high rotational speed that is also required because the high rotational speed will generate the frictional heat generation will be much more. Then we apply the compressive force at the contact of the workpiece such that uh, in this case that the metal, the plasticized metal will come in contact and they can make the bonding between the, between the two components. Heat is produced is in this part frictional ring is because of the friction and material has to be displaced plastically at the fang surface so that we can ensure the bonding occurs with the application of the external pressure even after generation of the frictional heat. So, that is why some part which is may not be the, the, the flash can form with the application of the compressive load or compressive uh, pressure uh, at the interface. Now, usually all these cases the friction welding one piece uh, if it, there is a relative motion between the two components is required uh, that is the at the interface and the for the generation of the friction lead but one piece we can usually keep as a constant and other piece usually we allow to rotate at the high rotational speed. So, these are the very basic steps. Uh, associated with the uh, friction welding process. But here we observe this we try to discuss the linear rotary and friction stair welding process, but we have not we are not supposed to discuss the or radial and orbital uh, uh, frictional welding process, the, but in this cases uh, this uh, process is uh, something different as compared to this thing. So, say in, in which is not in the scope of this particular course. Now, we look into the linear friction welding process. So, linear friction welding process we can see that initial phase some come uh, that uh, one part is kept stationary and other part is basically we can keep the the this uh, this um, vibratory kind of uh, motion. So, to and fro motion this case, but uh, this uh, probably at a high frequency we can make the to and fro motions and uh, if you see at the interface there is a uh, uh, frictional heat generation and at the same time with the we apply some kind of the compressive load here. Now, uh, see uh, in this case, so once the compressive load once sufficient heat is generated uh, with the, the, this making some relative motion between these two parts and then some we apply the uh, axial load and then application of axial load then it will create some kind of the uh, flash, flash formation is there you see this is the, the softened material. Uh, plasticized material is just come out and they make in the flash. Now, we keep it for a little much more time, uh, longer time and even we apply more load also then some more flash can be generated here. So, once we keep what uh, allowing to cool and this thing and after cooling we remove the this uh, this flash which is from it we just remove it flash. Then it creates the bonding between these two uh, components. So, here you see the phases are the initial phase, transition phase, equilibrium phase, uh, declaration and the forge phase. Basically, we are telling this, this is we are applying the compressive load and which is follow the principle or mechanism of the forging operation then these two components can be joined. But initial phase we just uh, in this case to come in contact one we can keep stationary and then we start the motion uh, this thing uh, the A that means initial phase just keep it. Then transition phase means the keep on applying the reciprocating motion on the one top part of this component such that it is not uh, till there is a if you apply much more time then keep on developing the heat generation at the interface. So, that is called the transition phase I mean, keep on changing the temperature and the equilibrium phase when uh, up to certain phase 
and we see the phase C is basically equilibrium phase that means uh, at this point the heat is generated sufficient and no further generation of the heat is uh, basically required to bond between these two components. And then at the uh, next phase uh, declaration basically in this case we see that gradually we are reducing the uh, reciprocating motions and, and once it is uh, then we, after that we apply the uh, pressure high pressure compressive load and then that is called the force phase and then it is bonding between these two components. So, these are the basic steps of the linear friction welding process because since we are linearly varying the one of the component being the reciprocating motion that is why it is known as the linear friction welding process. Advantage avoids cracking in the porosity is using this process. Process is very fast and repeatable also that means if we, we, it is the same process when it can be repeated easy to automate it this process it is a at the same time energy efficient and no shielding gas is required in this particular case. So, these are the typical advantages associated with this process. The application we can find mostly for the joining of the aero engine compressor blade to the compressor disc. So, here we can find out the application of the linear friction welding process. So, even this process can be titanium alloy, nickel based super alloy can be processed using the uh, linear friction welding process. Now, we can see that uh, rotary friction welding process uh, in this case which is different from the linear friction welding process means one to the other uh, we usually symmetrical component we consider and we keep it one is a uh, fixed another is a keep on or rotating. So, at the interface their frictional heat generation will be there and that is the responsible for the joining of the two components. So, here delivering the energy to the weld at the interface. So, we, we use the direct drive direct drive means the, the rotating part is continuously driven by the equipment of the spindle motor is directly connected to the spindle motor and is keep on rotating this thing and other we can keep at the non rotating part. And there is another version of this thing in this case the inertia the rotating part is connected to the flywheel. So, these are the both options are there. So, once we can put the rotating part directly to the motor spindle and other we just drive the flywheel and thus rotating part is connected to the flywheel because if there is a variation of the inches, fly will try to supply the steady amount of the energy in this process. So, that is why these are the two different way we can find out the rotary friction welding process. So, similar one one non rotating part another is rotating part step one step two come in contact the rotating to non rotating part step three apply the pressure and we can see uh, with the application of the pressure we can say the interface it is a heat generation will be there. Mm, and uh, sorry after heat generation they will try to join together and step 4 uh, you can see that the kind of the ring along with the flash formation will be there and after solidification uh, means in, in this case uh, probably rotary friction welding uh, we can say that uh, usually in the solid state process we try to keep maintain the temperature below the melting point temperature. Then we remove the splash part and keep on uh, alloying to the cooling process then we get the uh, the joining the welding between the two components. So, see this is the rotary friction welding process. So, application of the pressure and this this is the kind of the rim kind of the this this is the actually the after welding or after forging these two components are joined together. Then we remove the forge component and then this bonding between these two components happens. Now, application of the rotary friction welding is that one is the turbine sap, piston rod, copper aluminum electrical connection. So, the we can see the wire connection if you try to do it and then in that cases the rotary friction welding is the one option. Cutting tool also here you can use the uh, this uh, joining the component uh, tubular transition join combining a dissimilar material for example, aluminum to titanium and aluminum to stainless steel all these cases we can use the rotary friction welding process. Advantage is the similar to the linear friction oiling process already mentioned, but in this case the reduces the intermetallic formation and alloying for a range of the dissimilar metals to be joined together using the rotary friction oiling process. So, one thing already mentioned the solid state oiling process we can reduce the intermetallic formation because of the this temperature the lower temperature you can perform below the melting point temperature and at the same time there are lots of combination of dissimilar metals can be joined successfully using the rotary friction oiling process. Now, here this part of the rotary friction welding is the inertia friction welding process. In this case we see that inertia the rotating part is basically connected to a flywheel big flywheel. So, flywheel 
is basically uses the kinetic energy to perform the oiling process. So, directly energy is supplied by rotating the flywheel and because flywheel can store the energy. So, once flywheel are up to the speed, certain speed, the motor driving the flywheel is disengaged. That means, initially we put the effort to run the flywheel because flywheel size is real bigger and heavier and then once we keep on rotating in this full speed, then we can disengage the uh, flywheel from the motor spindle and uh, in that cases flywheel uniformly supply the this kinetic energy at this point well, this make is possible to uh, uh, rotate almost uniform velocity. So, therefore, it brings the uniformity in the energy supply to the oiling system that is the main purpose of utilizing the flywheel here. So, this type of the oiling process is known as the inertia friction oiling process. So, joining of the component is the same similar way a rotary friction already explained or linear friction oiling process the similar way the joining or bonding usually happens associated with this process. Now, uh, overall we can see that application of the friction oiling process the critical air capped engine component automotive parts like engine valve, hydraulic piston, track roller in agriculture equipment even friction welded are open replaced by the casting and forging operation. So, we know that casting is the expensive and sometimes forging is the expensive. So, in that with respect to that friction welding is relatively uh, simple. So, we can replace this casting and the forging operation also sometimes. Disadvantage is that process is restricted to joining symmetrical object that I already mentioned this is a rotating component we are using a rotational. So, definitely it will try to always create the symmetric object for example, in round bar and tube can be joined of the same diameter can be joined uh, successfully using the this process. And another this one is the one of the material can be ductile such that it is having some deformation will be possible. So, that is why one of the metal must be ductile. Alignment of the workpiece for uniform rubbing and the heating is sometimes difficult to make in the alignment even it is a high, high rotational speed. So, it is sometimes difficult to make the keep on exactly the alignment for the rotating part. So, that might be a problem or disadvantage associated with this this uh, this friction welding process. Now, this is another variant of the friction welding process which is known as the friction stair welding process and nowadays it is the widely used uh, the welding process. So, here we utilize the friction, friction, frictional heat generation is also there at the same time we can use the steering action is also associated with this thing. So, frictional steering uh, both uh, we can use here uh, to join the two components. So, it works is basically it is a solid state process of course and we see there is a two work piece this is work piece one and the work piece along the this is the this is the central line work piece and over that there is a tool rotating tool is inserted. So, tool pin is inside inserted into the the along the thickness of the two components and then it is rotated with the very high speed. So, high speed rotation will be frictional heat generation. So, at the interface of the between the two between the two substrate or two or two work piece there will be frictional heat generation by the tool pin and then at the same time that we can the rotation the plastic plasticization of the material. So, it is basically rotating the uh, the already plasticized material from advancing to the rotating side uh, in this case and then these two components can be joined together uh, using the pl plasticized mixing of the material at the interface and along that we have the oiling direction if you see this figure oiling direction it moves the rotating tool very relatively slow speed along the joined oil central line. So, it is move and keep on continuously joining these two seats and uh, in this case. So, this is the very basics of the the friction stair oiling process. So, of course, we see that there is a heat generation at the, at the tool and at the same time there is a solder also. The tool solder is in contact on the top surface. So, here also some amount of the heat generation will also be there. So, both the heat generation also there and the, all these cases there is a frictional heat generation. But in this case we are talking about the advancing and retreating side is that advancing side is basically we see the this is the rotational speed of the tool. So, linear velocity at this point is this one and the uh, welding also we perform this uh, this direction. If it is the same then it is called the advancing side, but other side retreating side means other side the uh, speed is this one, but welding speed is the other side. So, these are the two opposite sides. So, that is why it is known as the retreating sides of the weld. Now, we see the objective of the FSW tool is basically generate the heat at the workpiece and the 
at this material uh, that move the material to form the oil component that mixing of the material. So, both frictional heat generation is also there and deformation effects also associated for the plasticization of the material and uh, in this particular case and advancing side and restriction we have already uh, expressed. So, now this friction stair welding is the basically we can see the advancement of the friction welding process and because friction stair welding relatively new process as compared to the friction welding process. Now, we can use further the friction welding process different steps of the friction welding process friction stair welding process is that that we see there is a so many steps associated with that uh, process. One is the when is see first is the say this is the rotating tool. So, rotating uh, this is the work piece. So, rotating tool is in contact try to be in contact. So, initial phase of the contact. So, we can gradually the rotating uh, this uh, plunging so rotating tool is gradually inserting inserting to the work piece. So, gradually inserting to the work piece thickness. So, that phase is known as the a plunging phase. So, we can count this as a time phase as a plunging phase. So, one is completely inserted one particular position rotating tool then we try to put the, the certain time to keep on the similar position, but keep on uh, rotating the tool that is called the dual phase. So, without advancement of the tool we just keep on rotating in the same position such that sufficient heat generation will be there. So, then initial dual phase after that we just keep on transversing the tool one particular direction. So, it is a keep on moving this particular direction. So, this phase is time phase is known as the welding phase. So, after welding phase the we follow the similar once it is done then we, we just we follow the final dual phase that means keep on this at this position uh, the same position, but keep tool is as a rotating tool uh, for certain time phase that is known as the final dual. And then gradually we can uplift it the gradually we are you see removing the tool from the work piece. So, that is called the plunging out. We can say that plunging in plunging out then initial dual final dual and the in, in between we have the welding phase. So, these are the typical time phase associated with the uh, friction stir uh, welding process. Now, if try to monitoring means that means what is the influence or role of the different kind of the process parameters in the FSW process one is the tool rotation rate. So, tool rotation rate or the RPM we can put either clockwise or counter, counter clockwise direction and basically tool rotation is helps to mixing the steering and the mixing of the plasticized material around the tool pin certain area of the tool pin and the higher tool rotation will definitely generate the high amount of the higher temperature due to the high frictional force or, or frictional heating and intense mixing and the steering action is possible at the high tool rotational speed. So, uh, the tool rotational speed is relatively high in this case, but tool transverse speed or welding speed is relatively low. In this case apex of the flow of the uh, steer material from the front to the back of the pin that helps when you try to move the tool from one direction, but it is relatively less in this case. Tool uh, rotation rate this uh, I think it should be the uh, tool tilt angle. So, not tool rotation rate it is basically tool tilt angle that means if you see the without whatever we have discussed that tool is basically inserted to the work piece the and the, the normal to the work piece, but the if there is a uh, and uh, we can make the tool is basically making some angle. So, that is called the uh, tool tilt angle. So, this tool tilt angle will basically effectively mixing the material is possible uh, then at the same time while moving the material from the one front to the the back of the pin. So, that is why the we can some if uh, certain cases we can in we can consider the some amount of the tool tilt angle this will helps the the enhance the mixing of the material in the for a very specific geometric configuration of the uh, oil component. Then plunge depth of the pin insertion depth we see that is a the depth of the till we, we can say the plunge depth is basically depth of the tool pin has to be inserted between the two work piece. So, exactly the plunge depth is not exactly the same depth equal to the this uh, uh, seat thickness or, or the work piece thickness, but it should be the tool pin size should be or plunge depth should be little less than that of the thickness of the work piece material, because we need some kind of the alliances just to avoid the interference with the bottom plate which is holding the work piece. So, that is how we can make some kind of the clearances. I mean to say that if this is the thickness of the uh, work piece, then we can make the tool is the up to this this is the tool. So, basically we make this amount of the clearance 
is the between the, the uh, between the tool and the tool in inserted tool and the bottom side bottom side of the workpiece so that clearance will basically avoid the interference with the bottom plate so this depth is basically known as the plunge depth now these are the parameters and here you can get some understanding that what are the different types of the tool we use in fixed sterling process one is the straight cylindrical pin tool cpc figure a the straight cylindrical tool pin this is the tool pin we can see and then straight cylindrical square threaded tool pin we can use the straight cylindrical square threaded tool pin we can use the straight cylindrical uh, v thread tool pin uh, we can see the v thread tool pin then taper cylindrical tool pin taper cylindrical tool pin we can use the taper cylindrical square thread tool pin taper cylindrical v thread so these are the different variant of the uh, tool pin but in general we can say that if we put the threaded tool that will help better the mixing of the material and the uh, it's a more uh, good amount of the plasticization of the material is possible if you use the the threaded um, thing of course we need to optimize or we need to have to look into the other parameters to perform or to better mixing of the material at the interface of the two components so for that purpose we can design the different types of the friction steel welding tool but we look into the x when designing the friction welding tool we have to look into that what choosing the material we have to look into that particular point one is the high compressive yield state that elevated temperature should be able to subjected by the tool uh, tool material dimensional stability should have very uh, good creep resistance of this particular material uh, thermal fatigue strength should be there and uh, repeated heating and cooling cited good good uh, toughness so fracture toughness must be there so all kind of the properties is also required to investigate to choose the tool material which in case of the fixed rolling process apart from this thing low coefficient of the thermal expansion these are the typical characteristics of behavior uh, is actually required uh, to qualify uh, for a tool material apart from the geometric features of the tool now nowadays uh, this there is a hybrid hybridization of friction welding process has been developed one is the uh, thermal energy assisted friction steel welding process so in this case apart from the uh, this thing we can use the some some heating preheating purpose uh, of the substrate using some kind of the energy source for example we use the electricity electric energy induction heating also we can use the laser we can use the plasma we can use the arc hot gas stream any kind of the simple gas torch we can use the to perform just to preheat the sample before plasticization by the fsw tool so here it helps to better plasticization because if we for the harder material if we preheat the substrate using some external heat source in that case it is more easier to plasticize or plastic deformation will be easier in that case so that's how we can use the the thermal assisted fsw process similarly mechanical energy assisted fsw process to characterize input certain benefits for example ultrasonic energy assisted uh, is used uh, to improve the microstructural properties also ultrasonic variation uh, vibration also shop the material in the very localized position and in this cases but without much variation in the uh, process temperature without increase the process temperature it helps to facilitate this softening behavior of the material using the ultrasonic energy as an external source or a secondary source associated with the conventional fsw process so this way there are different hybridization of the fixed state welding process has been developed and see here just uh, want to see that uh, if we consider the plasma assisted fsw process we can use the dissimilar metal it is easy to do this thing for example aluminum and copper we can use it join this thing so this is aluminum this is the copper workpiece so we can create the preheat when the plasma assisted means basically we preheat the material and uh, the before performing the fsw process the conventional fsw process we preheat the using the plus creating the plasma arc so here that actually this this helps one thing is that is soften the material but there is a flow the flow stress value of this aluminum and copper there is a huge differences so basically this preheating helps to reduce the difference of the flow stress value between these two components so that is the purpose of using the plasma heating in this particular case so here and other thing is that well zone increases in size and time it is basically depends on the plunging period but well zone remains the constant but this part is basically used as a 
uh, functional material, functionally graded material because it is a mixture of the copper and aluminum in, in, in this particular case. So, here plasma assisted friction stabilizing process is basically helps to reduce the, the difference of the strength level between the aluminum and copper and then it then in that case it is this dissimilar combination of the material is better way performed by using the hybrid FSW process. Now, even uh, like other processes uh, the FSW process is not exactly free from the defects. So, here the there is the so many reasons to form the defect formation and FSW process. So, some uh, is that a few of them are related to the inappropriate material flow and the heat generation. So, heat generation is not sufficient then we can expect the defects of bonding might not occur in the proper way. True rotational rate. So, true rotational rate, true turn, true rotational rate if it is the is the should be very high using if you do not take the uh, high rotational speed and then it is not able to join the two component. Then tool travel speed, tool travel speed is basically relatively slower if it is a too high tool travel speed then there is a might be occurs that uh, then uh, non fusion or zone will be able to available there and uh, not able to flow of the material in the desired position then we can expect some kind of the defects associated with that. So, basically tool rotational speed is usually higher side and tool transfer speed is basically keep the lower side to avoid the defect formation. Improper tool geometry selection. So, tool geometry is also important certain cases cylindrical tool pin may not work in that cases probably we can use the threaded tool pin. So, uh, that has to be optimized of course, some exercise is required experience is required to understand the what kind of the geometry tool geometry is appropriate for this particular material. So, therefore, improper tool geometry selection will not help to create some kind of the defect. Insufficient plunge damp, plunge damp has to be sufficient and then if the plunge damp is not sufficient then we can say the bottom side that may, might the two interface might not be joining proper way and sometimes it is very difficult if the unequal seat joining thickness of the joining materials in that case also it can create some kind of the defect. Then gap between the plates also. So, we can cannot in the fixed installing process the if there is a the interface should be in close contact if there is a gap between these two is not too much then then uh, that will create uh, the proper mixing or the lack of material flow who might be there associated with that. So, these are the typical reason or the fact we can look into uh, for to avoid uh, uh, any kind of the defects associated with the FSW process. The one of the most important defects or most widely happen generally happen defect is the tunnel defect and associated with the uh, FSW process. So, in this case insufficient selection of the parameters basically uh, associated to the insufficient heat generation and thus the reduce the mat material plasticity size. Uh, plasticization at the street zone and that will create kind of the very small channel uh, in the welded comp uh, it usually the tunnel defect usually occurs at the internal defects associated with the FSW process. Now, apart from this thing we can uh, try to look in the other uh, solid state welding process then, then that is another one is the ultrasonic welding process. So, ultrasonic welding process is basically is the coalescence of the phase surface usually occurs with the application of the high frequency vibratory energy is basically high frequency vibratory energy is basically created at the interface. So, therefore, the work piece is usually joined together with the application of the low static pressure. In this case, it is not necessary to have to produce the very high pressure we can see that process also. So, in this cases a low or moderate amount of the pressure is required, but at the same at the same time there is a, uh, it is necessary to allow some create of the vibratory energy at the interface. So, that will help to very localized position the melting or the, the slip will occur uh, between the two surfaces and high, the high frequency slip will occur. So, that will create some kind of the frictional heat generation at the interface and that interface is the localized melting also associated with this thing, but there will not be any bulk melting. So, this will help to join the two component of using this the, the ultrasonic welding process. So, ultrasonic welding process the main features is that it can create the affected zone is very localized position that can be control in this case the very small zone the we can focus on this the to apply the vibratory energy using the ultrasonic system. So, here oscillating shear stress at the interface between the two meeting can be joined and the along with the application of the low to medium pressure will helps to 
in make the bonding between these two component. So, here interfacial reaction is basically is associated interaction not reaction interfacial interaction here the localized temperatures rises is basically because of the interfacial slip and the plastic deformation and this temperature also depends on the what is the ultrasonic power is used what is the clamping force here this is a very important features as FSW but what you are clamping and the thermal properties of the material all can decide or influence the maximum temperature associated with the uh, process. Of course, it is uh, the interaction the localized plastic deformation occurs very localized. Metallurgical phenomena such as recrystallization phase transformation can also occur, but of course, in this case the solid state phase transformation will occurs it may also associated with the recrystallization formation of the new grains, new fine grains is possible using this uh, the interfacial reaction or I can say that the overall the using the ultrasonic uh, uh, welding process. So, two different types of the system is usually we know in ultrasonic welding. One is the wedge read system and as the la lateral drive system. So, here you can see the the wedge read system and lateral drive system. In this case, wedge read system is basically we see the clamping force mass is there and here the transducer is there and the this transducer is create the some kind of the uh, vibratory energy in this magnitude, this magnitude, this is the magnitude or the way we can create the vibration at the interface and they see this is the at the interface between these two, this transmits the sonotrope tip, this transmits the energy at the interface because we are interested to join the bit, the interface of these two sheets. So, though you have to see, make the system in such way that this vibratory energy is basically transmitted to the interface using this sonotrope tip. So, here the clamping force, but clamping force is very important parameter. So, optimum clamping force is required that will effectively transmit the energy or creating the localized shearing happens at the interface of the two sheets um, and there we can perform the welding process. So, here this is the support system, the anvil is there, we can uh, we can use the force both side with the, this system. But here you can see what I can create the vibratory energy and how the system in this case the this known as the wedge reach read system. So, it basically accurate control on the parameter is not possible in this particular cases due to the bending mode through is the mechanical vibration is transferred to the workpiece. So, here you see this is the creating the system and the transducer is basically uh, creating the vibration or you can see the magnitude of the vibration is basically span this way. So, this system sometimes it is very difficult to accurately control this system or main the difficulties of this ultrasonic welding is that how we can transmit the, the vibratory energy mechanical vibration at the interface of the workpiece. So, for that purpose we can use the so many systems or the different configuration of the system. So, system means here the, we can the mass system is there we can put in this way and the holding the anvil in this particular position. But the anvil sometimes act as a vibrating part also sometimes and which is resonance out out of the phase of the read. So, that is why we have to perform the very uh, carefully this in, in sense that we try to find out the optimum parameters is very much needed uh, in this case. So, we need a lots of trial to set on the initial set of this thing. So, in this case the read system is more useful for the joining of the sheet with a large thickness. So, basically this particular sheet is basically the large thickness we can join uh, using this particular system because the very we cannot with this configuration we cannot very accurately control through transmit the vibration energy at the interface. So, that is why this is suitable for the relatively high thickness of the material. But lateral drive system we can see in this case is the this is the system transducer is there coupling and the sonotrode is there and it is connected in this way uh, here and this is the this create the damping force and uh, the vibration magnitude is the same similar way, but here it is more easy to transmit the vibration at the interface and more control way the vibratory energy can be transmitted at the interface and this helps to join relatively the thin sheet. So, here this system in lateral drive is more suitable for the joining of the uh, very thin specimen and due to its very lower rigidity of this particular system. So, here we can rigidity is relatively higher, here the rigidity is relatively lower. So, that is why it is suitable for the very thin sheet and it is suitable for the high thickness of the material using the ultrasonic system. So, power generation in the ultrasonic welding process, here you can see the frequency is transformed to the vibratory energy through the transducer. So, basically you can see the 
the transducer you can use it that actually creates the transmit the the frequency is transformed in the vibratory energy and the here is the frequency convert, uh, converter is there electrical energy to the frequency converter from there we can use the vibratory uh, transducer. So, here energy requirement uh, using the relation we can use that E equal to electrical energy supply electrical energy is basically uh, is equal to K into this parameter Hb into T to the power 3 by 2. So, Hb is the Vickers hardness number of the material and T is the thickness of the sheet not the time here T is the thickness. So, depends on the what is the amount of the energy is basically required for a system it depends on the hardness of the material and thickness of the material. But K here the K is the constant but K is a very complex function uh, is basically depending upon the what are the electro mechanical conversion efficiency that means what is the amount of the electric energy is converted to the mechanical energy that way it depends on the k value can be decided efficiency of the the impedance mass the weld and the characteristics of the welding system all actually matter so k is basically as a complex function of there are so many factors of the system so different types of the transducer system have substantially in this cases all these cases k values are uh, different now we will try to look into the diffusion bonding process this is the another the joining or oiling process or I can say the solid state oiling process the diffusion bonding process. In this case it is also here you see the covalences at the fang surface with the application of the pressure usually at elevated temperature. So, at relatively high temperature but with the application of the pressure but in this case there is no need to create any kind of the the this relative motions or the between the two surfaces. We can keep the two surfaces stationary condition the apply of the pressure at the same time this uh, diffusion can be accelerated with the application of the heat energy at the surface. So, here if you see this configuration I have written here because if you connect it to the electrical circuit basically it will create some kind of the resistance. So, that resistance is the uh, heat generation will be there at the interface and that heat generation will helps the diffusion to occurs between the elements the two surface or uh, two components A and B. So, this process does not involve the macroscopic deformation you can see although we are taking the deformation process, but it is not associated with the macroscopic deformation what we exactly observe in case of the friction welding process and even we can observe some kind of the deformation is also associated with the ultrasonic, but level is very low at compared to the, the friction welding process, but in this case there is no macroscopic deformation or, or no relative motions is associated using this process. But in this case we can simply these two components can be joined together with the application of the pressure as well as the, the static pressure as well as the, the heating. But what is the mechanism all these things? In this case this it is very important what is the, the joint interface because we know there is a contaminated layer usually happens or oxide layers on the uh, any kind of the metallic surface. So, if it is possible to eliminate this contaminated oxide layers by cleaning the surfaces then we can keep in contact almost the, the any contaminated free surfaces if it is possible to produce and then we keep in contact then it is easier to occur the diffusion to occur between these two surfaces. So, basically we can create the environment for the diffusion, but in this case the joining by the diffusion process the important features is that the surface preparation is the most important aspect associated with the diffusion process. So, we see the bonding mechanism also that stages of the bonding operation we see that two components the aspirate is come in contact. So, basically you see the microscopically you can see the, the two surfaces it may not be flat also. So, we can say that some asperities is there we come in contact at the this thing we can see this bonding is happens we are assuming the this this surfaces is almost there is no contaminated layer and this pure element is come in contact at, at the interface. Now, uh, in the first stage has come in contact and then first stage of the deformation uh, interfacial boundary will try to form. So, you can see the interfacial boundary will form. Then second stage some boundary migration will occurs and the and the pore elimination. So, that means that will create the pore, pore will be eliminated from the uh, through the grain boundary migration. And finally, third stage the we try to use the then once it is there the it is connected through the grain boundary migration then it will try to the volumetric diffusion to occurs and it will try to completely eliminate the this uh, the pore pore formation. So, these are the three uh, different stages is basically associated with the diffusion bonding process. Now, 
fraction of the diffusion bonding is that uh, this uh, different factors one is that how to calculate the temperature uh, the in the diffusion uh, process and temperature and time. So, here we can estimate the diffusion coefficient. So, diffusion coefficient is basically d0 diffusion constant at the exponentially we can e to the power minus q by kt q is the activation energy t is the absolute value of the temperature k is the Boltzmann constant. We can see that the diffusion coefficient can vary with respect to temperature also and it is a exponentially decaying in that way we can see that it is a uh, it is a varying. So, that is why the diffusion coefficient is varying with respect to temperature. Now, we can see that diffusion length, diffusion length means over the time if we keep the keep in contact for the two surfaces over a long period of the time then it reach up to certain diffusion length and then it will then we can say the perfect bonding between the two components is possible. But how to calculate diffusion length depends on the, the C is the constant the diffusion coefficient and time. So, how much time is required? So, that depends on this thing the diffusion length depends on this thing. So, actually in the diffusion process diffusion welding process the, the two things is there one is the surface preparation and second is that the time consuming. So, it is a very slow process but this process is very strong process that means very good oil join is possible to achieve if we it is uh, if we perform the the create the environment for the diffusion to occurs between the uh, two surfaces. Next we will try to discuss about the explosive welding process this is another solid state welding process. So, in this case we understand that this uh, is basically metallurgical bonding occurs the two components the using the explosive force. So, how it works? So, we use the explosion here and then two surfaces for it this is the substrate and we try to make the cladding of the thin layer over the, over the substrate. So, here uh, the keep on explosion is there and keep on explosion is moving with the chemical explosive is basically um, moving uh, high uh, one, one particular direction and it creates the very heavy, heavy impact on the surface and this, this surface will basically project it on the, on the substrate. So, here we see the but it is a it is a very high speed we can see that and in this case with the short period of the impact time this there is a adiabatic heat rise adiabatic heat rise means without any transfer of the heat. So, adiabatic heat rise is there so without any loss of the heat. So, because it happens in the very short period of the time. So, application we can see the typical application of the explosive welding we see the car cladding of the carbon steel with a thin layer of the corrosion resistant material over material. So, it is a big structure is there and we want to make uh, the cladding of the very carbon steel of this substrate material. So, in that cases we can use the explosive oiling technique. So, process geometry see that parallel plate bonding is used for the longer plate. You can see flyer plate velocity range from 250 to 500 uh, meter per second. So, in this case the at this speed it can reach the coalition point where the this the, the high pack jet will be created with the coalition of this material to the substrate at this point the it can range from 1500 to 3000 meter per second and the coalition angle we can see it is making angle is around 5 to 20 degree. You can see now these are the, the this range now we can realize that that how first this process that it is may be associated with the this that kind of the this uh, uh, velocity is basically uh, we can observe in this particular process. So, in this case so using the explosive thin sheet is a high jet is created and it is basically imparted on the this uh, substrate material. So, the impact time must be sufficiently high to cause the colliding metal surfaces to flow the hydrodynamically. So, metal is actually flow the hydrodynamically when they intimately contact with respect to each other. We can see that the morphology of the the morphology of the welded component can understand what we can create the bonding of the uh, two components uh, or I can say the the seed to the substrate material. Major process variable is that impact velocity what is the impact velocity what is the standoff distance between these two plates. So, these are can you can say the standoff distance and angle of approach. So, this angle of approach it depends on the this uh, the material properties also and the explosive velocity all matters to create one uh, steady values of the uh, angle of approach. Now, you can see further is basically how it works. So, basically shock wave propagation is basically with the high impact uh, velocity is created with the using the explosive. So, therefore, in this case the shock wave propagation is basically uh, 
we can observe, we can close to the shock wave. So, in this case, um, experience in the explosive welding process and but in this case the shock wave propagation velocity should exceed the sonic velocity but sonic velocity of the most of the metal is between 2000 to 6000 meter per second this is the sonic velocity sound and in this case explosive velocity, velocity is basically greater than 120 percent of the sonic velocity of the material and not be used because there is a, another problem that is the called the shock rarefaction will occurs associated with this process. So, if the explosive velocity should be less than 120 percent of the sonic velocity of the metal. We can get some understanding that what is the sonic velocity of the sound with this particular medium. For example, lead, copper, steel and aluminum. We see that aluminum the velocity of the sound with aluminum is 5500 meter per second. Still, it can 4500 to 5200 in that range, but lead and copper can be less 4200. We can say the velocity of the sound for the different medium are different, but in this case explosive velocity should be less than that of the velocity of the sound for this particular material. We can simply calculate what is the sonic velocity of the material that V s equal to E by Young's modulus of the material and the rho is the uh, material density that can calculate what the sonic velocity of the material you can simply calculate. So, we take as a reference of the sonic velocity and based on that we can expect that what can be the range of the velocity associated with the, the explosive welding process. See this is another detonation velocity we can use the explosive explosive it is a characteristic type of the explosives and it has been shown that the directly proportional to the explosive density. So, detonation velocity means the what a explosive when you keep on starting the explosive keep on moving uh, one direction. So, it starts from this point and gradually it is moving very high velocity because there is a continuous layer of the explosives. So, it starts from one side explosive keep on burning the and keep on uh, burning one side and keep on moving on other side. So, this explosive velocity depends on the what is the density of the, the explosive. For example, TNT, RDX, uh, these are the different types of the explosive is the density are different and you can expect the detonation velocity can be uh, in this case detonation velocity the Vd. So, what we can move this detonation velocity can be 6700 meter per second. So, that is the velocity of the explosive is possible depends on the density of the or type of the uh, it means the density of the explosives. For uh, nitro guanide explosive range from the 2000 to 5000 meter per second for explosive density between 0 0.14 to 0 0.9 gram per centimeter. So, it is entirely depends on the density. So, we can say the detonation velocity can be like that V d equal to this plus 4020 into rho e. So, we can link with the density of the this uh, this explosive. The flyer plate velocity you can see the V p is the flyer plate velocity see this is the what we can impact on this thing this flyer plate velocity V p is the flyer it can be uh, 2 V d sin beta by 2. So, beta is the basically impact angle you can see this is the beta is the impact angle and this is the detonation velocity V d and we can link with the this flyer this V p the flyer plate velocity can be 2 times 2 Vp sin beta by 2, beta is the impact angle, this angle is the impact angle and the explosive pressure is also proportional to the Vd square. In this case, the Vd is the detonation velocity into density. So, explosive the amount of the pressure is basically depends on this uh, parameter. So, here beta also impact angle or sometimes beta is called also dynamic bend angle and rho is the explosive velocity. So, these are the different terminology you can use it and we can see these are the standoff distance between the flyer plate. So, initially this is the positions and once the explosives uh, started moving from one position then high impact the seat is basically impact on the on the steel seat and create very specific interface uh, like this morphology this specific morphology it will create uh, over this thing. Here we can get this thing. So, basically if we see the in the arc welding process steel to steel can be joined together we can see this is the morphology over the surface we can see. But uh, when it is uh, explosive welding process we can see the steel aluminum it creates this kind of the morphology. So, it basically interlocking of the, the two sheets but all happens in the solid state it is basically solid state deformation process. So, here we can see the morphology is something different as compared to the other welding process or I can say the other uh, solid state welding process also. Now, explosive welding is mainly used for the lap joint and used for the lap joints. 
in difficult to oil material. So, which cases very difficult to oil metal in that cases lab joint configuration explosive welding can be utilized. These are the examples for that explosive welding one is the aluminum to stainless steel, aluminum to nickel steels this applications stainless to nickel, aluminum to brass, titanium to steel, zirconia to stainless steel, zirconia to nickel based alloy, copper to aluminum. These are the different examples of the combination of the material where we can perform the explosive welding process. But overall I can say that uh, sometimes the explosive welding the this control parameter the control of the explosive is sometimes difficult. So, monitoring and control of the explosive welding is basically this difficult as compared to the other welding process and apart from this thing there is a safety issue associated with the explosive welding process. Otherwise, explosive welding is basically create very unique morphology uh, at the interface uh, between the two components. Now, once we started all the different types of the uh, solid state uh, joining or oiling process, now here I have tried to discuss the uh, one uh, particular case studies associated with the different solid state oiling process. One is that case study on the dissimilar oiling uh, for the two different compositions uh, ENAW6082 and uh, ENAW5083. So, these two different materials we can use it and we try to join uh, these two components. Now, let us see what are the different uh, issues associated with this process. So, objective to analyze the effect of the keeping the constant to rotational speed, to rotational speed and the welding speed ratio R. So, R is basically we can see the tool rotational speed and welding speed we try to keep it R on the microstructural and mechanical microstructural and mechanical uh, properties associated with the this uh, this uh, friction stir rolling process here you can see that now tool description tool made up of d d i n e n so it's a very specification particular steel is used having the pentagonal and triangular shape you can see the pentagonal shape and the triangular tool pin so do different tool pin or the same material are utilized for the joining of the to different aluminum grade uh, we can use it and then this two are the different tool or the different material. Now what observation is that this case that three distinct zones were characterized in the extracted sample which is influenced from the FSW parameters and the pin shape this zone nugget zone thermodynamically affected zone and the fusion zone we can see these are the different zone actually observed if you follow the macro graph of the welded joint and we try to look into the different uh, this thing the different zone using using this particular uh, process uh, the FSW process having two different kind of the tool pin two different geometry of the tool pin. Now you see that onion ring type produce the pentagonal shape that means this is the pentagonal they create the onion ring. Uh, higher circumference is basically more distinctive and wider engine than wider that nugget zone on contrast with the triangular pin. So, we can observe the wide range of the nugget zone and using the pentagonal shape pin as compared to the triangular pin. And another observation is that this thing the tunnel and the cavity types of the defects were present both in the joint fabricated by the triangular shape pin due to the insufficient heat input results in the inadequate material flow at this, at this particular process parameters uh, in this case. So, here we see the tunnel and cavity type of defects are present using the using the triangular pin and of course this defect is uh, we observe triangular pin but shape of the geometric shape of the pin is not only the reason for the defect formation. So, there might not be the improper process parameters might be an another reason to create this kind of the defects. But anyway uh, using this tool we can observe the we can say that from triangular pin we can observe some defects but using the pentagonal uh, pin may not be the defect. And now we can see that a different observation cross section of the oil joint. So, is this cross section we can see that different the shape the morphology are different using the triangular pin and, uh, and using the uh, this uh, pentagonal pin in the figure 3. So, we can observe here the how the nugget joint formation, nugget zone formation thermomechanically affected zone is there we can identify. Uh, from the macro graph after performing the welding operation using the friction. So, definitely the size of the nugget zone thermomechanical effect zone might be different if the geometrical shape of the pin is different, uh, but of course using the same set of the other process parameters. Now, 
Nugget zone consists of onion ring. We can see that uh, nugget, this kind of the nugget zone is treated. This is the we can see this is the onion ring means basically we can see that how the morphology is created using this particular pin. So, plastic flow of the material happens and the uh, because of the plastic flow we can get this kind of the pattern onion rings and here this figure 4 depicts the defective welded joint sample. We see uh, some kind of the defects we can observe here and here also we can observe the defect associated with the triangular pin. Now, what was the observation is that uh, in this case the this uh, onion rings produce the, the pentagonal pin it is having the more distinctive than different type and the wider range of the nugget zone is observed and which is clearly distinguished as compared to the triangular field. So, this is the one observation and second observation is that we can get the defect of the using the triangular pin we can get the defect that indicates in the figure 4 uh, the defect is formation and figure 3 the wide range of the nugget zone we can see the uh, nugget zone are different in these two cases and what here we can get the uh, defects also. So, these are the observation associated to the two different types of the tools. Now, ultimate tensile stress of the triangular shape pin basically pin enhanced with the increasing the tool rotational speed we can see the this uh, ultimate tensile strength is basically enhanced. Uh, you for the triangular pin if we increase the tool rotational speed. However, this behavior was not analyzed for the pentagonal shape pin. So, basically not observed in case of the pentagonal shape any kind of that kind of the trend. Second, the efficiency of the joint strength is varies from 55 percent to the 68 percent. So, this actually because they are having some kind of the internal defects associated with these cases. So, that is why you are getting efficiency not reaching exactly the 100 percent. So, joint strength is basically very very low with reference to the 100 percent. Now, hence by increasing or decreasing the TRS or WS while making R as a constant the profile structure and ultimate tensile value changes significantly. So, here we can see the uh, observation is that it is possible to enhance the ultimate strength or we can say the joint efficiency is possible to while keeping the R as a constant. R as a constant means we can keeping increasing or decreasing the tool rotational speed and the along with the tool transfer speed. So, usually there is a lots of variability is possible, but keeping the same constant values of the there. There are so many combination of the tool rotational speed and the, the trans, tool transfer speed. But overall I can say that uh, if you keep the tool rotational speed is a relatively higher side and uh, ultimate tool transfer speed is the lower side that will always try to produce the better result that will try to improve the efficiency irrespective of the what kind of the geometric tool profile we can utilize in this particular case. So, here just an uh, analysis of the, the dissimilar welding process in, in FSW uh, dissimilar welding in case of the FSW process and you can see these are the uh, typical conclusion uh, from this analysis we can we adjust we have discuss, uh, similar observation we can we can say. So, here uh, I have tried to explain the different solid state welding process and this will help to understanding the what are the, the welding process is solid state welding process is usually used to perform the, uh, the more efficient welding process where we can find out the difficulties using the fusion welding process. So, that is all. Thank you very much for your kind attention.